Hello, this is Mrs. Slater and welcome to section 9.3. Altitude on hypotenuse is what we're going to focus on all of this section. And um, you're going to identify the similar triangles and relationships between the parts of a triangle when an altitude is drawn from the hypotenuse. Now realize that a hypotenuse is only on a right triangle. So you're going to have to write triangle and then similar triangles within that. Okay, and then we're going to apply the altitude on hypotenuse formula, show you some shortcuts, and um, all based off of this triangle right here. Okay, so in this triangle, you're going to see that there are three triangles in one. So the first one is this one right here in black. Then you have one over here in red. And then the last one is the largest one there. So you have a total of three triangles. Now, they are all similar to each other, so let's discover why. Um, for example, the red one and the green one are the same because they have an angle and they also have a right angle, which is here and here. So because of angle, angle, those two are similar to each other. Now also, you have the black one and the green one that are similar to each other. Here's the angle that they have in common and again, they have a right angle that is in common. Okay, and so the third angle of each one of these is going to end up being the same thing, which creates all of them to be similar to each other. Okay, now let's look at it a little more closely. In this picture, I have, um, I have drawn in some colored triangles. Let's go ahead and move a couple things here. And I want you to compare what they're going to look like. For example, the first triangle that I said was similar is this green one. Okay, it has sides of B, D, and C. Okay, now the next one is the blue triangle. So I'm going to pull the blue triangle down here. Now it's not similar the way it is now, but I'm going to rotate it so you can see the corresponding sides a little better. And those that I just turned were D here, C, and the top one was A. Okay, and then the last one I want to pull out of there is, whoops, is this yellow one. Okay, the yellow one is also similar and I'm going to have to move that around and flip it just to get it to look correct. Okay, so now they're all the corresponding parts are, are there. The right angle was C, so I'm going to put a C here. And then the little one was B. And the last part was A. Okay, so now that we have all of these moved around, I think it's a lot easier to see what the three similar triangles are formed. So for example, you have the green one, which is C, B, D, which, and that's going to be similar to triangle A, C, D, which is similar to A, B, C. And we're going to be using those triangles anytime you see an altitude on hypotenuse. Again, the biggest one has to be a right triangle. All right, so here's some shortcuts. A lot of things to read, but the main things here are what we just discovered that all three of them are. The next two shortcuts I'm going to also explain, um, but just real quick, the altitude of the hypotenuse is the mean proportion. So we are going to have a geometric mean for all the other relationships that you're going to see. So in order to um, really explain what is going on with these shortcuts, I want to go to the next uh, slide. In order to show the first shortcut, h squared equals x times y. I want to first set up a proportion. So I'm looking at the triangle on the left, which I will highlight in red. And then I'm also looking at the triangle on the right, which I'm going to highlight in blue. Okay, so those two triangles, we know already that they're similar to each other. So we're going to use a proportion in order to solve them. So if um, you look at where H is, H is like the middle size length of the red triangle. So I'm going to put H over X, which is the smallest side of the red triangle, and that's going to be equal to the middle size length of the blue triangle, which would be Y, 
and the shortest side of the blue triangle, which would be H. And that would set up a proportion that we can cross multiply. And you end up with X squared equals X times H. Okay, so that takes care of the first one. The second one um, is B squared equals X times C. So let's see how that works. I've highlighted the small one as a green triangle and, um, and the, the largest one with a red triangle. And um, the relationship between those sides, for example, the hypotenuse of the little triangle is B. So I'm going to put B over the little side of the triangle, which is X. And the little side of, I'm sorry, the hypotenuse of the red triangle is C. And the smallest side of the largest triangle is B. So when you cross multiply, you end up with B squared equals X times C. And again, because they are similar triangles, we're able to do this. Now the third one. For this one, we're going to need the biggest triangle and the medium sized triangle. And if you look at the relationship of the hypotenuse of the medium sized triangle, which would be A, compared to the medium sized length of that medium triangle, and that's going to be equal to on the red triangle itself, it's going to be C because that's the hypotenuse. Notice both of these are the hypotenuse and then this is going to be the, the middle sized leg. Okay, and so that is compared with A. And if I cross multiply, I get X square, A squared equals Y minus C. Okay, so let's practice some of these problems. I think once you practice, you'll, you'll understand more what we're doing. Okay, if you have to find the missing sides, uh, the first one that I would start with is the X. I know that that length right there, squared, equals 4 times 5. And by solving, X squared equals 20, and then X is square root of 20. Usually it's plus or minus, but in this case it is a distance, so we're only going to use positive. So you would end up with 2 square root of 5. So that's X. The next one that applies is going to be the relationship of side A. We'll do that one in purple. So I want to know what this length is. And if that's the geometric mean, it would be A squared equals 4, because A is the hypotenuse, it'd be 4 times the whole side. So 4 times 9. A squared equals 36. A is going to equal 6. And the last one is B. So we're going to, again, it's the geometric mean of two sides. B squared is the hypotenuse on the, the lower triangle here. So we have B squared equals 5. It's closest to the B. That's how you know to grab that one. Times the entire length of 9. So you have B squared equals 45. And the square root of 45 ends up breaking down to 3 square root of 5. All right, let's go ahead and try the next one. <clears throat> okay, and this time I'm going to again start with the X, the one in the middle, the height or the altitude. So X squared is going to equal 4 times 6. We will just have to subtract to get that value. And if that equals 24, take the square root of that, you end up with 2 radical 6. B squared it doesn't matter the order that you go in. B squared is going to equal the number closest to it times the entire thing, which is 10. And that gives you 40, and the square root of 40 would be 2 root 10. And the last one here, A, is A squared equals the, the side closest to it times 10. And there is no number out there that can break down 60 except for 4. So I'm going to go ahead and write in 2 square root of 15 for the final answer of A. Okay, so on example number 3, we're going to start with the Pythagorean theorem on this triangle that you see on the right side. <clears throat> 
And as we know, the Pythagorean theorem says that the two sides squared will give you the hypotenuse squared. And the value of this is going to be 45 plus 25 equals b squared. So that means b is going to be the square root of 70. So if that is the square root of 70, we'll be able to find out what x is. <clears throat> because that side squared is going to be equal to 5 times the entire segment, 5 plus x. So you have 70 equals 5 times 5 plus x. I'm going to divide by 5 to get 14, and then subtract 5 to get 9. So now that I know that side, I'll be able to figure out what a squared is. a squared is 9 times the whole thing, which is 14. And you have to add those two values together. And 9 times 14 is 126, which breaks down into 3 radical 14. All right, so I want you to go ahead and push pause and try the next one. Find the values of x by Pythagorean theorem, and then use the shortcuts to find the, uh, the values of the next. So x, you should end up with 2 radical 10. a, you should get 8. And b, 2 radical 6. And we'll check those in class if you did not get those answers. On example number five, we're going to start with the Pythagorean theorem. Because this is a right triangle, you can take 7 squared plus x squared equals 12 squared. Go ahead and push pause and do so. Hopefully you got 95 and the square root of 95. And at this point, I can't think of anything that, that's a perfect square that goes into 95. So let's go ahead and go on. That is going to be a value we can use to find b. Square root of 95 squared equals b times the entire length. So when you square the 95, you end up with 95 all by itself. And then dividing both sides by 12 gives you a lovely decimal. Um, and we also, we'll just fill that in tomorrow. Um, and then the next one, you can do 7 squared equals a times the whole entire value. And whatever 49 divided by 12 is, is going to be your answer. So also be ready to answer that in class. Okay, and I leave you with the last one that I would like you to work on uh, before you get to class tomorrow. And you have to find the values of x, y, and z. Good luck. See you then.